Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing great today. Welcome to the Great Art Adventure. Now, this is basically a new series, a new chapter where I will be sharing my entire art journey from scratch to finish. And in this first chapter, I will be collaborating with another artist known as the Nemesis of Van Gogh. And uh, the thing is that we both will be following a tutorial of the great Bob Ross. Now I know Bob Ross, he was a very calm, cool, calculated artist. And, uh, but there's a twist. The twist is that we cannot watch the video, the footage. We just have to listen to the audio and interpret what he's trying to create and make all of that information and put it in our work. And I know it's going to be a very like weird or tough journey, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun and it's going to be like a new experience for me. So. Um, I asked my sister and to like download the entire audio for me. Unfortunately, she said no. So I had to make her day and, and had to take her to some kind of you know sushi restaurant and buy her some sushi. And she was like happy with that. And soon afterwards, we just she just downloaded the audio and I actually have not listened to it. And I'm now ready to listen to it and to see what exactly is he trying to make. And uh, I hope it goes well. Before I start my drawing, I always cover up my canvas with a mixture of portrait tone and raw sienna. This gives me an insight and a rough idea on where I have to place the basic proportions and lines. Soon afterwards, I sat down and started listening to the audio my sister downloaded and I started to write down those important points so that I can easily decipher and understand what Bob Ross was trying to mention in, in his video. So after listening to all of those instructions provided by Bob Ross, I just I'm trying to like figure out what type of painting is this. He's actually mentioning more about the background, which basically it's like perspective. And in the perspective, he says there are mountains somewhere far away, along with these instructions with the colors. Also, he's mentioned some of these colors that he applied liquid white. Unfortunately, I didn't do that in the very beginning. Um, and and there's some titanium white, pale blue, crimson, and some bright red, Indian yellow, yellow ochre, and the other thing I've realized that there's a sky along with clouds and the sky needs to be like blended. It isn't, it's not like a very, like, it's like a foggy place I, I'm assuming right now. Plus he said there's a cloud and he's like mixing with titanium white along with some red. And uh, for and also he has mentioned some clouds which will be in the background along with these colors. And the other thing I've realized is that since it's very foggy here, he said that there is an illusion of distance, meaning that there might be like a silhouette somewhere in uh, in between, and you have to draw trees uh, for that dog, uh, giving that perspective, uh, giving that silhouette look. And there's some water uh, uh, below, along with the colors. Um, and he said there's a sun somewhere in between the mount, uh, somewhere between the clouds. It's like a sunset. It's, and he also mentioned some land, along with some colors, and the trees. I'm not sure how many draw them and on what side he said, but I'm assuming it might be two or three. We'll figure out, and I'll see that once I get to, once I get very near, I just real, I just assume and realize that oh yeah, this is the amount of trees I need. So after listening down all those instructions, I'm now trying to make sure I do this as quickly as possible because you know the I, I normally like work in um, natural light, but it's about to fade away. But I'll just turn on the light. Uh, I think according to the instructions, it just says that the sky needs to be blended, and you're using a little bit of Indian yellow with yellow ochre. Um, I'll just see how it goes. I mean, I don't know about this, but let's just figure it out. A bit of yellow ochre right here. Blending yellow ochre. Okay. It's not very a bit dull. I need more of this. So finally, got some of that paint out. Uh, that's very. I don't know what's happened. So a little bend, little blending over here. We blend some of this here. Not that much. Perfect, nice contrast to blend the colors. Yeah, that's more like it. Blend well with the color. Now, he said that 
some fellow blue must be added. Okay, I'll do that. Fellow blue. Okay, I hope I have some fellow blue. So my according to my instructions, it basically says that you have to use the sky, and for that you need like fill blue with some purple and mix it together. Okay, we'll just do that real quick. Where's the palette? This is what exactly is from trying to mix up these colors. So after mixing some of fill blue with some purple. Uh, I'm gonna create uh, some kind of a sky. It said in the instructions they need to be blended together. So let's do that. That's perfect right now. And I just have to uh, make sure that using a clean paintbrush, I just have to blend uh, all of the colors together so that I can get uh, get a good perfect uh, analysis of how I can make the clouds in the next uh, stage. Some of this crimson red must be added to this layer according to the instructions. Not that much. A little bit of blend here and there. Yeah, that's perfect. This making those clouds uh, this, this big. Now the clouds, it said that you need titanium white, okay, and you need some red. Okay, I mean, I don't know which red it's talking about, but I believe it has to be, if I had to guess, um, I mean, I have two reds, one is marmel and the, let me just try this, I don't know, I don't know what to see. Unfortunately guys, the light just, uh, the natural light just faded away right now and I have to use the other light, but I can work on this, we'll just see. Now according to the instructions, he said the titanium white and red will be used to make clouds, but I'm not sure which from which direction should I go for, or this side or this side. If I had to guess, I mean, that doesn't make any sense here. I'm not sure about here too, but I guess I'll just go from this side. Uh, we'll just use the titanium white and the red color and blend it here to create a little bit of a cloud. over there because that part right there is very dark so it needs proper blend. That's just now this is looking a very good it's pretty very good like uh, foggy atmosphere. Yeah, that's perfect. Good. So I don't want to take too much time painting these clouds because I have to, like, you know, have to move on with the next process. To this part is left. This part is left. I mean, this one thing I need to add is um, some clouds. According to the instructions, so there's a blend over here, like some of it over here too. Not that much, but a little bit. Thank you. 
It's coming to life, if I, if I can put it that way. The thing about acrylic paint is that it becomes it's easier to paint, but it just problem is just dries up quickly. But the fact is that you can blend it very easily. Compared to oil paints, it's just like very hard. It, it, it takes time for you to wait so it can dry up it, and then you can blend it, but it's very different. So basically, what I'm going to do right now is just mix up a little bit of this portion, a bit dark. I'm just going to use some pale blue and some uh, purple along with it to make sure that it blends well, you know, with the sunset and dawn that is approaching. I think that's enough. Yeah, it's perfect. Look at that. Oof, voila. So moving on, um, the next thing I'm looking at is the illusion of distance. Now I, uh, um, now I'm just thinking about this for a second right now. Is that the illusion of distance is something like um, something in the background? It's less focused, more in the foreground. So you have to like uh, focus more on the for uh, focus more on the foreground and add more details to it compared to the background. Now I mean, so far I like this part. It creates a very foggy, misty environment, but what i feel like something's like this part needs some elevation over here so that it feels like this uh this pur these purple clouds look go backwards and something pops up in this part i feel like if i add some dark clouds to this area maybe that might be the icing on the cake but oh, let me think over this let me just try perhaps it might be good my critical effect is that i don't recall anything from the audio that Bob Ross was mentioning and thinking about that, but I mean, the illusion of distance. If he's talking about the illusion of distance, I mean, I should go for this. I mean, I, I hope it could just stays perfect. I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen, but this. Um, no, nah, I don't really like this at all. It's just overpowered the previous cloud. Yeah, uh, that's not good. Let me just change it up a little bit. I might just add a little light tone into it. With the rest of the painting right now, which is basically, uh, if you go if you go down the canvas, it will be pale blue and purple. Here we go again with the same colors. Now I think what Bob Ross says that down the canvas there is like pale blue and purple, and you have to blend it again. I mean I'm not sure how much space do we have to do. This is the sky, so compared to this to that, I'm guessing this much size might be good. I mean. I think I should cover up this much portion. Yeah, I think yeah, this might be good compared to this because I don't want to do anything about here. This might be, there might be something over here. I don't know because because it's a perspective painting. There might be something here. And I think it was like mountains. Yeah, it was mountains. Yeah. I'm always curious that. Um, you know, normally I don't actually listen to any music when I'm painting because I just keep me distracted. But I don't know about you guys. What do you guys think? Should you listen to music when you're painting or does it like distract you? You can mention in the comment section and let me know. Okay, now for the sun. Um, I mean, can't be here, can't be there. Um, I think maybe perhaps sunset. So I guess I'll draw it over here.
he said that there's a foothill, a foothill, perhaps somewhere around here, and there's some trees that will be like a silhouette. Tree, so I don't know how many trees will be there, or perhaps I'll just write, I'll just draw one over here, and just one over here, and some branches along with it. No, that just covered up. Anything else in there? I don't think there's anything else. Or perhaps small details I'll just add by myself. And I think, yeah, that's pretty much it. Make some details. The same thing. Yeah, so this is some lines. Uh, we have to combine sap green with yellow and a little bit of black to it. Okay, we'll just do that in a little one. Why you would like this sometime? Now it's time to paint the trees. I'm actually using fill blue and bud umber for this, so I'm guessing it might be here. Uh, guys right now it's almost complete i just have to add the small details and then we have to finalize and we'll see <sighs> then i have to see how my other artist has done it Since we both did not get all the elements in our drawing, we both had to say something absurd about ourselves, like a penalty. My father kept my name with a year, but I kept my name with a year. Now, everyone says to me with love and love. And I am very happy in this. Thank you. Well guys, that marks the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was a long tiring process, you know, uh, following Bob Ross's tutorial, but I really enjoyed it. It was, it was really like fun and it was like a new experience, a new challenge for me. Um, well, this basically marks the end. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe and watch out for my next videos. This is me signing off. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.